All right, so what I want to share with you in the next 15 minutes is um, four ideas on uh, using an uh, learning analytics. Um, so I'm going to talk about identifying important factors in predicting success um, for students in your course. So we're talking about course level analytics for now. Um, a success model that we built to identify at-risk students um, in the course, as well as using that success model to assess intervention strategies and instructional modalities. So uh, the idea here is if you want to compare, say, an online or hybrid uh, model for teaching a course versus a traditional one, um, intervention strategies that you're using. So I'm going to be talking about kind of a supplemental instruction idea, but you can also use this to study learning communities, et cetera. Um, and then related to that, advising students into perhaps an online implementation of a course, um, intervention strategies, et cetera. Um, I'm not going to get at, in, at all into the statistics, the statistical modeling. Uh, I'll mention this uh, individualized treatment effect idea that we developed later on, but um, just make the one statement that we're using an ensemble learning approach. Uh, so the idea is that we use a suite of machine learning tools um, and we build our model and uh, determine our outcomes over that whole suite of tools. Um, and I'd be glad to talk to anyone interested uh, later on. But we'll just talk about results. All right, so the context of the study we have is in STAT 119. So I'll use that for illustration purposes and motivation. Uh, STAT 119 is an intro business statistics course. Uh, though at this point, it's probably half business students, and it is required for probably all the majors, but most of the majors going into the business school, uh, pre-majors. But half of the students are just taking it as their quantitative reasoning GE. Um, it's an excess enrollment course. Right now, we're teaching it in two modes, a hybrid version. Uh, so it meets once a week in the classroom. And then the other time, if you will, is online lectures created by the instructor. And then a traditional face-to-face -face, uh, section. And what we're finding, and this is a number of semesters now that we've taught it, is that in the hybrid section, the DFW rate, so that's the rate of uh, scores, either D, F, or withdrawal, is higher in the hybrid section. All right? However, if you remove unofficial withdrawals from the equation, all right, so unofficial withdrawals are students that disappear from the course. And if you're teaching excess enrollment courses, you probably have been uh, confronted with this uh, difficulty. The way we define unofficial withdrawals is that students who did not take the final exam, all right, they scored a zero on the final exam. If you remove them from the equation, actually the DFW rates even out. Um, and I, in previous semesters, it even outs even more. All right, so the motivation here is that we want to identify these potential unofficial withdrawals early on the semester. All right, keep them engaged and get them through the course. Um, so that's part of the learning analytics here. I'll go through quickly the, the other motivation. Repeaters have a harder time in this course. Um, you know, lower pass rate. And related to that, we found an interesting phenomenon in just the registration process. The hybrid sections have a larger percentage of repeaters um, than the traditional sections. And furthermore, we found, and this is generally over the semesters, the Thursday sections perform worse than the Tuesdays. Right? So this is a class. They meet either Thursday face-to-face -face or Tuesday face-to-face. -face. All right, so uh, the motivation here is, first of all, using our success models to perhaps advise students into different sections. All right, maybe a group of students would perform better under the hybrid than the traditional, <coughs> or vice versa. And then we also have a recitation section I'll be talking about, a voluntary one-unit recitation, and using our model to actually advise students who would most gain from that recitation section. Um, that's good there. OK, so that's a setup. Um, this is, we're analyzing data from fall 2013. Uh, we have a whole bunch of data. I summarized uh, a, a little bit of it here. I divide it up into four categories. Uh, I think they're all self-explanatory. So we have our demographics, educational background. This last one is admission basis. So that's whether a student has either transferred into SDSU or is a first-time freshman. Educational preparation. Um, I think the last one needs a little explanation. These are, this is pretty much their experience with online courses. All right? And the proxy for that is how many units have they had in either a hybrid course or an online course. Um, and then I called these SDSU programs, but this is just identifying if it's an EOP student, a low-income student, compact scholar, um, et cetera. And then we have a whole bunch of 
course level data. All right, so in this course, quizzes and homeworks were done online. Quizzes, they were allowed to take multiple times. Uh, homeworks, they had a period when they can submit it and it also could be submitted late. So we have data on the score of the homework, when they did it, how many attempts for the quiz, whether the homework was late, um, the exact date of when they did the homework. This quiz zero is actually a math competency exam that we give right at the beginning of the semester. For statistics, it's just to gauge their ability in doing algebra. All right, so it's essentially an algebra assessment. We have exam scores. Um, learning management system, so Sean is going to talk a lot more on this. We use Blackboard, the older version of Blackboard, so we didn't get too much out of it, but we were able to get click rates, so hit rates. So as a proxy for learning management uh, engagement, we have how often the students clicked each week in the semester as well as over the whole semester. And then we have attendance in the course, which was measured by clickers. Um, and then there were clicker quizzes in every single face-to-face uh, -face session. All right, so first avenue of learning analytics. Um, we can identify which factors are most important towards predicting student success. So what I have here is in the first two columns, we looked at the whole semester's worth of data. All right, and we tried to look at which factors were most important in predicting final exam score and C minus or better in the course. All right, and I'll just highlight a few things. Um, interestingly, well, the whole semester's worth of data as well as the most recent, I mean, the, the exams and homeworks, et cetera, closest to the final exam were most important. But learning management system engagement during the 16th week, essentially the last week of the semester, was uh, one of the most important variables. Overall engagement in the learning management system over the whole semester. Attendance in the course was important. For predicting grade, though, C minus or better, interestingly, the learning management system didn't pop up. Uh, but I suspect we weren't able to dig down into the data as much as Sean has been able to. So I'm hoping that will pop up. But attendance was very important. And what I was fascinated with is actually homework one was one of the most important variables towards predicting grade in the course. All right, so they got to get off to a good start, at least in this course. Is this still for hybrid? Uh, and this is over all students. Yeah, so we'll dig down deeper. Right now it's hybrid and traditional. I haven't divided it up. Uh, I account for it in the model, if you know regression modeling. But um, So homework one and whether it was late came out as important. What I'm going to talk about for the rest of the uh, few minutes is trying to identify early on students at risk of performing poorly. So we're going to do that using pre-census data. Um, and based on pre-census data, not surprisingly, based on this result, homework one was the most important. Um, otherwise, it's kind of educational preparation. So high school GPA, SAT scores, that quiz zero, algebra assessment. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out was living in a dorm mattered, which is findings that has come up, you know, Raymond Zahn has done a lot of analyses showing that if you lived in a dorm, you know, you have a higher chance of success. All right, so what's the point here? I, I see this part of it as kind of instructor analytics, so identifying which assessments might be best towards predicting student success. Um, those that don't pop up, maybe you should take a closer look at um, and revise. This finding on homework one is relevant, right? Make sure the students get off to a good start. The other side of this is this identifies variables that will be useful towards developing a success model. All right, and that's what I'll be talking about next. All right, so by a success model, what we're thinking about is based on all this data and pre-census predicting the probability that the student will succeed in the course. And we also will be predicting their final exam score. Okay, and again, the idea is to flag at-risk students early on and well, make sure they're engaged and then provide an intervention potentially. Uh, I'm not going to go into details. I'm just going to give you two examples of how this can work. So here's a student, business pre-major, uh, transferred into the university. Educational preparation, perhaps not so great. I'm below average SAT, OK GPA. I'm, these days with grade inflation, B plus is probably so-so. Um, the student hasn't taken math since high school. Um, <laughs> did not perform well on that algebra assessment, so 50% on quiz zero. First generation compact scholar, does not live in the dorm, did not enroll in our recitation course. So I'll talk about this in the next slide or in a couple of minutes. Uh, but this was the extra one unit recitation section to try to help the students out in problem solving. But a student that was engaged, 
did homework one, did not hand it in late, and actually got a perfect score. Our model predicted this student had a 27% chance of succeeding in the course. Um, so that's a, you know, C minus or better. And in the end, it wound up being a, an F. The student got an F. So the idea here is that here's a student right at the beginning that should be flagged. We can grab them, engage them, get them into 119A, get them into tutoring sessions, get them into office hours, and have the instructor follow up. Here's an unofficial withdrawal student. All right, so what we did is, again, we can predict final exam score. So this is a student who, based on pre-census data, we predicted to get a 205 out of 300 on the final, you know, which puts them as, as a C-plus student relative to the final. But based on the whole semester's worth of data, they would have been predicted to get a 110 out of 300. All right. Um, and my thinking here is that we can follow the student throughout the semester. Say after the first week, you know, they're predicted to get a 250 out of 300. After three weeks, a 200. After four weeks, a 175. This is a student at risk of, of losing engagement or uh, withdrawing and try to grab them back. All right. So again, the idea is to flag these students. How, am I at the three-minute rate yet? Excellent. All right. Last thing. <laughs> um, so I mentioned part of STAT 119, we have a voluntary one-unit recitation section called STAT 119A. Um, and for this particular semester, the percentage of traditional and hybrid students in that 119A was about the same. All right? And altogether, about 200 students enrolled in it. Um, this recitation section is run by GTAs. They do problem solving. Um, directed problem solving, and then a lot of conceptual discussion, right, to deal with some of the harder concepts uh, in statistics. Um, just a base analysis, we found that the students in this course did perform better. Um, on average, they performed 16 points higher on the final exam, and that was significant. Um, 1.7 times more likely to succeed, so that's C minus or better in the course, and that was significant. But we can actually dig deeper. And we can actually find how well the students, or predict how well the students would have done if they had taken 119A versus not. All right, and this is this individualized treatment effect idea. So it's an idea we stole from the uh, personalized uh, medicine literature. Right? So in personalized medicine, what they're trying to do is, primarily for clinical trials, right? a patient either gets a treatment or a control. Um, and they want to determine, based on your medical workup, how well you might or how, what your outcomes might be under the treatment versus the control, all right? Same idea here. We can use our machine learning tools, even though a student didn't take 119A, to predict how much better they might have done on the final if they had taken 119A, all right? And the idea then is that we can do an analysis, identify groups of students who would benefit from 119A, and then at the beginning of the semester, we can actually predict for every single student what the benefit would be in 119A, take the group that would perform the best and make them take that 119A. All right, and this is not for just for 119A. We can assess you know, whether they should take an online course if they do better there, um, whether you should give them some kind of intervention strategy, analyze, analyzing learning communities, the benefit of that, et cetera. Um, so it's a really neat tool, um, and you get this treatment effect for every single student. But I'm not going to show you that big Excel spreadsheet. What I'm going to show you is kind of an average result so this final slide is the average student that gets the biggest bang for the buck from taking 119A using these individual treatment effects. All right, and uh, I know it's a lot of stuff on this slide, but I'll highlight some things. Again, it's a student with a weaker educational background, lower SAT scores, okay GPA, more likely to be a first generation college student, more likely to be a business major, transfer, math, most recent math, most likely, more likely to be in high school. Um, okay, good. Uh, less likely to have taken calculus, and probably this is the most alarming part, they did not enroll in the recitation section. So a significantly lower percentage of them actually took that recitation section. Um, take this with a grain of salt, but you know, we predict how much better they would perform on the final. That's out of 300, that's a lot. But the main thing is that these students would gain significantly from being in 119A, and they would perform significantly better on the final exam. Okay. Um, I have a summary slide. I, again, so what I, the ideas I tried to get across is identifying important factors that predict success for students in your course, early identification of at-risk students, and also a tool for assessing intervention strategies. Um, and then, you know, some stuff that might come up in the uh, second hour of discussion. 
uh, the Promising Course Redesign Grant, and there's a new CSU Student Success Dashboard, um, which I'm hoping will develop something similar here. Thank you.